Recently, the ballast went out in my fluorescent light fixture. These lights are supposed to come on when I turn on my kitchen lights. Originally, I was going to replace the ballast, but my electrician friend said, why don't you just direct wire them? And I'm like, that is a great idea. With direct wiring, you can just use LED bulbs. There are four different kinds, but only two are commonly used. Type A is the common one. These are the ones that you can just trade out right now with a working ballast. And this is what I've been using the last four years when my fluorescent tubes burned out. One thing to take note is that not all type A bulbs will work with all ballast. Type B LED tubes do not require a ballast. And this is what I'm going to do. Direct wire to bypass the ballast. I found when buying LED tubes, if they don't say B, they are probably A. There also is a type C LED tube that is dimmable. And there is a type A plus B, but we're not going to focus on them right now. I just want to let you know they do exist. Now this was my plan going in. I was going to cut all the wires on the ballast, direct wire to the tombstones on the right hand side, and cut the wires on the tombstones on the left hand side. It's important to know if your tombstones are shunted or non-shunted. Mine are non-shunted. This means each leg has its own power source and this wiring will work. However, after inspecting my wiring and thinking about it, I changed it up and you'll see why. I really hate these cheap, flimsy covers, but I guess it's better than having the hard plastic ones that shatter. I figured this ballast cover would be screwed in, but it was just a simple squeeze and remove. And there she is, the reason I'm having to do this. This is currently how my ballast is wired. We got the yellow going to the upper legs on the right hand side and the red and the blue on the opposite side going to the lower legs. Before we do anything, we should check for live wiring with the voltage tester. Looks good to me. Even though when I'm doing electrical work, it still makes me nervous even when I check the voltage. My brother who used to be an electrician tells me I should lick my fingers first, but I'm pretty sure he's messing with me. You should always check your tester on a known live circuit. You might have a dead or even missing battery. I cut the left hand wire short because I was going to cap them off. I regret doing this. There was no need to remove the ballast, but I figured I'd get it out of my way. All right, here's a new plan. I already have jumper wires running on the right hand side to the upper part of the tomb and on the left hand side to the lower part of the tomb. So if I wire hot to the right hand side to the upper tombs, I should be able to take my neutral to the lower side of the tombs on the left hand side and circulate power. Since I cut the blue and red wires short, I'll have to splice them back in. I think this will be less work than wiring the tombs on the right hand side for neutral. I believe this should work just fine. What would you have done? Would you have done it this way like I'm doing now or would you have done it like my original plan and just wired one side? Sorry for the poor camera work here. I am new to this. I tape off the hot just for a peace of mind. And then I wire in the neutrals as planned. As a DIYer, I should probably invest in some Wago nuts. But I've been using wire nuts for years and I haven't burned a house down yet. At least not one they can prove. Here are the lights that I got. I got them from Lowe's. They were $25 for a pair, so $50 for all four. I have found a set of four Type B LEDs on Amazon. But I didn't want to wait for shipping. I wanted to surprise my wife while she was out of town on the weekend because she's been wanting this light back for a while. And it was only $13 more and these are GE after all, not some unnamed brand I don't know about. One of the things I noticed when watching videos is that no one was putting warning labels up letting others know that the ballast has been bypassed. Originally I was going to use a label maker to make a warning sign 
I was pleasantly surprised to see that these bulbs came with warning label stickers that I could put on myself. Each box comes with two warning labels, so I threw all four on there. After all, if I sell this house and the new homeowners need to change a bulb, they wouldn't know. Hopefully one of the stickers will get their attention. Alright, when the tubes are installed, it's a moment of truth. Another thing I'll mention is that there is an LED strip inside these bulbs and you want to face them the right way. One thing I forgot to mention that on the box, there are wired diagrams on how to bypass the ballast. That should help you out if you're doing this project and you have a different setup than me. Alright, while well I'm getting this button up, I want to mention I will leave a link below to the bulbs I used. And I'll also leave a link to the ones on Amazon I would have used. I will say these are very bright. They're 5,000 lumens. So if you want something that's a softer white or less bright, you will have to search around yourself. If you're looking to do a project like this, I hope this helped you out. And thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one.